Sarah Gore and this is Open House NYC. This week, innovative interiors all over the city. In the Bronx, we check out how this couple remade their apartment into an ode to Victorian decor. And in Chelsea, this former carriage house has been turned into a modern, light-filled entertainer's dream home. On the Upper East Side, how one architect used his idyllic Central Park views as inspiration for this unique home. But before all of that, we are with jet-setting designer Karim Rashid in Hell's Kitchen. I really hope you enjoyed coming into my home and exposing my privacy to you. <laughs> Welcome to Open House NYC, everyone. You are not going to believe this grand estate I'm coming to you from this week. Located in Rye, this home was built in 1915 by noted early 20th century architect David Adler, who built many of Chicago's most famous private homes before the Great Depression. This was one of his rare East Coast projects, and it's filled with all the elegance and grandeur of the age, with soaring ceilings, gracious spaces, and fine detail throughout. It's sited on just over two acres of totally private park-like grounds. Winter or summer, this is a wonderland. Inside the home features impressive, elegant living spaces like this great room, dining room, and a home office worthy of any work from home mover and shaker. It also has seven bedrooms spread out over seven and a half thousand square feet of old world luxury. This week we are all about innovative and ingenious interiors, so it's fitting we are getting started in Hell's Kitchen with one of the true giants of design, Karim Rashid. He's an industrial designer, an interior designer, a lecturer, philosopher, and all-around renaissance man. Karim envisions the future in vibrant colors, designed with one goal, to make you happy. As simple as that, to make you happy. <laughs> Take a look. Hello, this is Karim, and this is my apartment in New York City. I took this apartment about two years ago. It's a small penthouse that has a very nice view of northeast west on the deck. I believe that design is about making a better human experience. I need to have a lot of color. I need to have a comfort, a kind of contemporary feeling, a language that feels like I'm alive now, that I'm living now. So, you know, when you come in the foyer, there's some wallpaper on the right side. And it's nice because it's a kind of a three-dimensional wallpaper. It has thickness to it, it isn't flat. But also the digital pattern that's on it is, you know, typical, I guess, of my work. This idea of connecting the time we live in. The world in which we live is very sophisticated. It's very technological. It's very smart. We also live in a, what I call the casual age or the age of casualism. And casualism is like, you know, like, for example, my shoes, you know, the, these, this kind of idea of slipping on and off. I never wear laces. I never wear buttons. Life should be like a, a good sneaker. It just feels seamless and comfortable and good for you and ergonomic and all that. When I'm working on computer, I made myself a little corner home office to work there. It's really more because I just designed that desk and I always loved it and I kind of always wanted to use it. So it's a desk with seven colors of drawers and all my markers are in there laid out in, in colors. When I design, the first thing I do, and it's maybe just habit, but I need to draw. The dining table I usually use when I want to sketch because I just have a much bigger surface and I can really lay out everything. My hand and my mind is the connectivity. It's the way to get my ideas, manifest them into reality in a way. When you analyze your interior space, every object in it should have some sort of connectivity to you. We spent so much time now at home that I think we've all become critics of what we have around us. So when I design interiors too, I really immediately think about comfort. We as human beings are asymmetrical, we're amorphous and organic. Then the thing that I'm sitting on needs to also work with me. When there's a new prototype that I've designed, I bring it into my place and I kind of live with it. For example, this table is for an Italian company called Slide. It's made of compression molding. It's a very strong, nice table and still one of my favorites. You know, if I'm on this table and I spill a glass of wine, it's not going to go over the edge and, and destroy your carpet. The carpet here is a kind of 3D pattern that I've developed and it kind of gives a positive spirit. And I've always kind of been obsessed with that idea of bringing into an interior environment when I design hotels or condominiums or anything, is to shape 
kind of a higher energy experience for people. So they feel good when they walk into a space. They feel positive and alive and inspired too. I try to capture this moment in which I live. The energy and the power and the color and the beauty of data and information. And so I think our physical world can become an extension of our digital age and vice versa. I really hope you enjoyed coming into my home and exposing my privacy to you. <laughs> so thank you. Coming up in just a few short minutes, a unique take on a classic Upper East Side home. Stick around. Welcome back. Now we're on New York's Upper East Side for a look at this unique take on the classic Central Park facing Fifth Avenue apartment. Take a look. Hello, I'm Whit Chapman. I'm an architect and interior designer. Today I'm here to show you my own apartment, which I designed with my fabulous wife, Shachi. So when we first walked into this apartment before the renovation, it was broken up into many, many small rooms, all the same size. And so we knew right away, particularly in this area, that we wanted to open this up in a big way. So this living area consists of a large seating group here, and the dining table, and then the kitchen beyond. This seating group is anchored by this sculptural wall. It's uh, covered in a Venetian plaster with metal dust in it so it has a nice reflective quality. This wall was inspired by Central Park. There are beautiful, big boulders that we see outside our window. We wanted to interpret that as modern sculpture and have a piece of sculpture that we could really interact with. We had this sofa custom created to fit perfectly in to this faceted wall. Once we had established the blue of the sofa, the other colors, they're really a question of how they interact with this main color of blue. So the stripes of the Ottomans, this chess set, we really wanted it to be playful, modern, and welcoming. The first thing that you notice about the kitchen is the island itself, which is really a fragment of the sculptural wall behind the sofa. We wanted this to feel like a bar for entertaining, hence the selection of marble for the top at this level versus the stainless steel countertops in the rest of the kitchen. The reason you can't see the rest of the kitchen is not just because of the high countertop, but it's also because this beautiful wall of oak panels are disguising the kitchen function beyond. We like the convertibility aspect, so this room can feel completely different when these doors are retracted and you're looking at the lovely open kitchen or when it's fully closed. So in the main bedroom, we painted three of the walls deep blue green. And then the fourth wall is the sculptural wall that brings you right on into the bedroom. So one of the things you notice right away is the wonderful, extraordinary view over Central Park and we framed it as its own special vignette and added a window seat which allows you to get right up close and occupy the view. So beyond the blue, there's a lot of color coordination. The painting, the rug, the custom-made bedspread. You'll see that all of the colors, the blues, the purples, the golds, they're all coordinated to work in harmony together. There really is nothing like being able to design your own home. And with a wonderfully collaborative partner like Shachi, we've really been able to push the envelope a little bit. Thank you so much for coming. Stick around, there's so much more ahead on Open House NYC. Welcome back. Now we're in Los Angeles for a brand new take on the mobile home. Vaughn Dabney is a programmer, a designer, and all-around creator who was just tired of paying rent. 
which I think a lot of people can relate to. So with a design-forward eye and a need for comfortable and convenient living, he created a self-sustaining home inside a delivery truck. Take a look. Hey, my name is Vaughn Dabney. Welcome to my tiny home truck. By trade, I'm an engineer. I naturally want to solve problems and I didn't have to worry about paying rent, especially while I travel. And the best way to do that for me was to live in a delivery truck. So in my home, you'll find dual purpose spaces, amazing functionality and charm. It makes me feel good. And I want people to feel good when they come into my home. So initially, starting to build this truck, we're dealing with a metal box here, very cold. And what I needed to do first was insulate it. And then I put the subfloor in, I put the plywood walls up. The ceiling is composed of tongue and groove pine paneling. And that is adorned by some pipe lighting that I created myself. So even though the pipe lights are very simplistic, they are made by hand and it just gives a, a great light to the space. kitchen, I have a handmade countertop. I used alder wood and it's stained. It's called the poor man's cherry wood, if you will. I have a nice two burner black propane gas stove accompanied by a black sink, which is the fan favorite of everyone. I love natural light. I thrive off of it. And so in the kitchen, when you walk in, there's a little flap that you can lift up and it shows a window, a beautiful window out to the world. And although it looks amazingly good, the window was not there when I got the truck, but I actually cut to the metal and I installed this window myself. So I usually spend most of my time in the living room and so I wanted to create an open space that felt larger than it was. And I have two benches on each side of the truck. They have storage underneath, again, utilizing as much space as possible. I have my bookshelf, I have my cabinets, and when it's time to go to bed, most people ask, where do you sleep? But actually, I built a custom Murphy bed. I had to think of a way to mount the projector, and what better way than magnets? So I just pop it up on the ceiling, pull my screen down, and start watching. Even though there's so much functionality in my truck that I built, you still need a place to put the extra stuff. And that takes us to my garage, where all the overflow goes in there. You name it, it's in the back. And the best part about all of this, I have solar panels on top of the truck. And that powers everything from my lights, the water pumps, everything in my home is powered by the sun. And when people talk about the views of their homes, I'm here to tell you, that I can beat that every day of every year. Well guys, there's nothing more to show. Thank you for joining me in my home. I gotta go. See you around. Well, Daphne has actually started his own business building out these van and truck conversions. So if you feel like getting off the grid in style, you know who to call. Coming up next, we are in Chelsea for a look at this carriage house. We'll see you in a few. Welcome back. Now we're in Manhattan's Chelsea neighborhood for a look at this 25 foot wide, five floor residence located on the original estate once owned by Clement Clark Moore, who in the early 1820s wrote that enduring ode to the holidays, twas the night before Christmas. What we have here today is a thoroughly modern home within its original facade designed to impress every step of the way. Take a look. Hi, I'm Scott Fava with Nest Seekers, and today I have a truly exceptional property to show you. This carriage house at 313 West 20th Street. And with 9,200 square feet, eight bedrooms, and multiple outdoor spaces, there's a lot to check out here. But let's start in what I like to call the ballroom. We have 16-foot ceilings, a beautiful skylight, 
a fireplace with an elaborate mantle, and a garden off of the back. You have plenty of room for a formal living room and dining room. And with such a grand space like this, you will definitely be throwing more than one holiday party here. And speaking of the holidays, this was formerly the estate of Clement Clark Moore, the gentleman who wrote Twas the Night Before Christmas. But before I take you upstairs, let's go take a look outside. This secret garden with its ivy-lined walls affords you complete privacy. It's also one of three outdoor spaces in this carriage house. It's a perfect place to barbecue, enjoy a drink, or to dine al fresco. On the third floor is the primary suite level. It includes a full bedroom here, ensuite bath, an office, and two walk-in closets. Situated in the back of the house, the primary bedroom is pin drop quiet and features original hardwood floors, a marble fireplace, and a ton of light. In fact, the bedroom has access to its own private palatial terrace. Here you have the ability to enjoy a private cup of coffee, catch some rays, or even look longingly down on your own ballroom. But let me show you where you can catch some of the best views in town. On the sixth floor is the crown jewel of this carriage house, this insane roof deck where you've got 360 degree views and some of the most iconic New York City skyline views you will ever find. Oh, and if that's not enough, there is your own private parking garage downstairs. Thanks for taking a look. We're gonna take a short break, but when we come back, we're gonna take it up to the Bronx for this surprising homage to Victorian design. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Open House NYC. Now we're in the University Heights section of the Bronx to check out this ornate apartment handcrafted by its owners to be an ode to Victorian design. Take a look. Hi, I'm Emery Ortiz and welcome to my home in the Bronx. When we bought this place, my husband and I were newlyweds. We were just so happy to be with each other that we wanted to express it in design. When we first moved into this apartment, it was in complete shambles. It was just plain white walls, plaster was coming out, there was no ceiling, no frames, nothing. We liked the 40s era, and so we just mixed a little bit of Victorian with some 40s things and some touches of chinoiserie. I always want to live in a home that's fancy. <laughs> I wanted to make it super dope, and I want people to come in, and that's all I want. Once you get out of the floor, you step down into what we call the parlor room. It's the living room. <laughs> it's just fancy. We place two giant urns decorated in chinoiserie. They are like the lines at the reference library, Prudence and Fortitude. The furnishings and the design was inspired by the hooded couches. There's two sections. There's this section that faces the foyer and then the other section that faces the hooded couch. And we did it this way for more open space for conversation. And then you can simply just turn around and look in between the humpbacks to talk to the people on the other side. I've always wanted to live in a home with a comfort ceiling because it just symbolizes wealth and opulence and I want to be associated with both. <laughs> and my husband said he could build it. We chose this particular wallpaper because I love palms, but when I first got it, I, it was just so ugly. <laughs> I thought, like, what did I do? Because there was so many flowers and I felt like it needed some sort of pop of color. So I took red nail polish and I went through each and every flower and gave it some color. And no parlor is complete without a bar car. <laughs> and we don't even drink. <laughs> The dining and kitchen area are separate. We kind of got used to the 60 square feet of cooking. We just can't gain any weight and be in the same space together because we, we won't fit. <laughs> we use vintage appliances in the kitchen. That fridge, you can actually see it in Mad Men. 
It's the same General Electric fridge. The stools in the tea room are actually plant stands. I didn't want chairs in there. I just wanted to keep it low and leveled and it had this really beautiful pink marble. And I was like, why would you want to cover that with a big old urn? I wanted my bedroom to feel feminine and masculine and a little bit on the countryside. What I thought was very masculine about the wallpaper is it had a navy ombre. It lightens up and then it darkens and then I had to get the paper matched with paint so it could look seamless. My husband put panels on the ceiling. He also put more molding in there. Ever since I was a child, I always had a vanity. As an adult, I think every woman needs a vanity just to prep and just to feel pretty. Well, this is my home. I hope you enjoyed taking a look. Thanks for watching. Like what you see on the show? Well, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We have so many more beautiful homes to share. It's all about love. Share these homes, you know?